Hi all, I'm Harrison Boilu. Thanks for streaming this episode of what I'm calling the COVID Conversations. Please do let me know if you have any better suggestions for titles. Um, basically, it's just sort of a, a journal uh, as we're all going through this time at the moment with the uh, coronavirus. Uh, and I just thought I'd speak to friends across the world and find out what situations they're currently in. Yeah, as I said, it's quite a strange time. I might be the only one who ends up listening to these, but if you are streaming, thanks. And I hope you find them interesting. Also, if you're watching the YouTube version of these, thank you to Greg Fadden for doing the little doodle at the beginning. Uh, you can check his other designs out at gregfadden.com. And also thank you to everyone who's currently working in healthcare around the world. So without much further ado, I'll get on with the conversation. Hello all, and welcome to the second to last episode of the COVID Conversations. Um, I think 14 episodes of anything is probably enough. Um, so yeah, um, I'm going to make this Friday the last episode. Um, I really thank you for everyone who's listened to these. It's kept me really busy uh, and all your support. And hopefully I'll find a new topic to start on. But for now, I'm going to end the COVID Conversations here. So yeah, thank you for listening. Today I'm speaking with Raihan Islam. Um, I lived with Raihan when I first moved to London. He was a, um, a guy who lived in the same house, but now lives in Kiev, Ukraine, um, where he's married, he's got a job out there, he's very settled out there. Um, I also know he's just come out of um, an operation, um, so I was going to try and speak to him about that and see how the uh, the atmosphere is in Kiev uh, with the coronavirus and someone who's just come out of hospital as well. He might... Um, be able to give a bit of an insight into the healthcare system out there as well, how they're dealing with it. So yeah, as I mentioned, this is my second to last episode. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. And yeah, see you on Friday for the final. You're just chilling at home. I'm working actually, but that's my definition of chilling. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stop you from yeah. work. You have to work. Well, whatever occupies yeah. your day, you know, you need to... Much. that yeah that's exactly the case i keep myself occupied with not just my day job but also my different freelance work and it just doesn't end so well like yeah. Uh, so yeah you, i mean you're recuperating now aren't you i mean you've just come out of uh hospital yeah so yeah i was um i was there for about five days five days okay yep yeah yeah what was the reason? Yeah, I had a, uh, a septoplasty. Oh, so wow. uh, I had a deviated septum from, uh, yeah, back when, uh, a long time ago. I mean, since probably well before 2010. Wow. And, um, yeah, it was, uh, what's the right way to put it? They said that I needed to get it done in like 10 years or something. Okay. Like the septoplasty to help my breathing get back to a good state. Right. So, yeah, that's what I did. And you haven't been in I pain? I've done finally. You haven't been li- living in, with pain or anything, have you? Or? Um, I'd say throughout the last, like, over 10 years, I clearly noticed that I cannot breathe easily through the left side of my nostril. Oh, wow, okay. So, so yeah, I just got it uh, sorted. And, and how? And uh, now I can now I can breathe. <laughs> that's that's a good thing. Um, yeah. yeah. Actually, so were you were you? Because coronavirus obviously affects breathing. Um, so um, were you at all concerned about contracting? Well, yeah. So uh, by the way, I, I forgot to ask since you know we got on the call. I, I'm assuming that you're already recording. Is that right? I am already recording. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. Um, so yeah, basically, yeah, I, I mean, I know that coronavirus affects people's uh, breathing Yep. and you know, it's, I thought about that too. So should I actually be at, you know, full Raihan when, when this, uh, when this hits the city, like if, you know, not, it's not a matter of if it's when, and you know, it's already happened in Ukraine. There are, um, you know, many cases, uh, I believe over 3,000 now as of today. 3,000? And yeah, over 3,000 in Ukraine. In U- in the and it Ukraine. started actually, yeah, in, you know, it, it, uh, it actually arrived here, at least from what I've been reading and hearing, that someone uh, had come in. It's someone who had traveled to uh, Italy 
and then they okay. had somehow gotten here. I don't know the exact details, right? But they had somehow come here, and um, that, that was that was that. Uh, it has been spread since then. Of course, yeah. So, but yeah, with with my uh, nose breathing, so yeah, I was worried a little bit that if I didn't get taken care of, and since it is a respiratory um, illness, the COVID disease. Mm-hmm. So yeah, maybe it could affect me. So I, I mean, it wasn't the only reason why I got it. I also decided to get it sooner because if there was going to be some type of a shutdown like this and it's, you know, it's already happening, yeah, it would be better to get it done really before there are major issues um, instead of waiting until the end of this year. Mm. So that that was the main reason why I I decided to get it done sooner. I was a bit worried. I mean, I, I wore a mask and everything, but yep. you, know, you never know what can happen. Yeah, I was in a hospital. No, of course. And yeah. you know, if you, you go to a hospital, you you might wonder. Well, you know, maybe there might be more people that have a chance of being infected at a hospital. But at the time that I went, it wasn't. Uh, I think everyone was taking precautions, but it wasn't too much of a concern. You know, yeah, it's not issue. Yeah, exactly, exactly that. Yeah, right. And, and how is the situation in hospitals now? Is it? Um, are they managing okay out there? Yeah, they. Um, as far as I know, like they, I've seen at least with one of the hospitals that I've been to, they've updated part of their layout, so they've added uh, glass screens. Okay. Uh, at reception. Yep. So that way, you know, people can't you know, breathe or spread particles uh, across to the receptionists and whatnot. Um, so that I think that, you know, they're trying everything that they can. I see that there's a disinfectant type of uh, sprays and whatnot provided throughout the hospital that people can use. And yeah, just my experience generally at that hospital was great. Uh, you know, the, Nursing staff was great. I mean, yes, everyone was wearing masks and everything, and you know, this it seemed fine. Um, yeah, I mean, I was reading the news while I was in the hospital, and uh, you know, I'd seen that it's con- you know it's just continuing to um, progress around the world, and people are getting more and more concerned. And yeah, I was too. You know, I mean, yeah, they already asked everyone to uh, work from home so you know i've been in general i've been working from home for quite a long time i go into the office here and there We're working but, from a hospital uh, i bed. think <laughs> well i had a uh, i did have a small laptop and i was in the hospital just to check up on some things and you know at that time i was in quite a lot of pain so mm. I try to distract myself by like watching uh, TV shows or movies or, or something like that. I'm glad you're by feeling better and you're, that. <laughs> and you're out now. So yeah, that's, that's a good thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm feeling good about that too. recovery at home. But yeah, as you said, like it's uh, during these times, hospital staff really, uh, you got to give a, a lot of kudos to them because uh, it's a, uh, they put themselves on the front line. Yeah. I mean, it's only, you know, because, you know, the number of cases has gotten to that number. I mean, I think it was only like, I don't know, it was like a week and a half ago. It was just significantly lower. It, it must have been over, I'm sorry, under a thousand. So it's just, you know, I think it's, it's only starting to, um, you know, have a wider impact. I'd say for the most part, people that I know are following all of the different social distancing yeah. guidelines or phys- physical distancing I, I i should say yeah. people are still in contact with each other people are using zoom i was even part of like an english speaking club uh run by an online english uh, school okay um owner yeah so that that was interesting i joined a couple of those and you know, keeping in touch with people although oh, nice we're one. You know, all all separated from each other. So oh, wow. practicing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I wasn't practicing English, but uh, <laughs> no. the uh, the other attendees uh, were, and it was just it was fun to be connected with people. So I wouldn't. I guess they use that term social distancing, but it's it's really more physical distancing. Yeah, yeah, right. Actually, else. I haven't really thought about it too much. Yeah, we are still being, well, some of us being more social than we were before. But 
Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, physical distancing, keeping your, uh, well, they say two meters, but as, uh, as far as you can, I guess. Yeah, I mean, um, I, besides the hospital, uh, I am usually at home anyway. Like, yeah, I, of course, I've gone out like to meet up with friends and whatnot. And I think the last time that I did that was, um, I don't know, it was sometime like in the second week of March. Okay. I went to um, like a bar restaurant with a friend of mine. Mm. And we noticed that there were significantly lower numbers of people there when we went. Yeah, And I was like, it looks like this will be the last time that we'll be going out somewhere for some time so that you, I, I and i knew it then that yeah, really it's gonna be a while so was, yeah. it, was it a big night was it i mean not really <laughs> <laughs> no i kept it really tame um yeah not, nothing going on much just had some dinner but uh yeah, yeah just it was a lot few, just there were just fewer people there than usual and yeah. uh I realized that that was just the last time. Something's about to go out. down. So, I mean, so what is yeah. the, what is the government um, advice out there now? Then you're in lockdown, and sure, yeah, it's um, yeah, it is a form of lockdown. Uh, you know, most businesses are not, uh, especially the physical ones that are not essential. Those are ones that are not operating. I don't know the exact guidelines. But uh, I know several people who, they're, you know, they're not allowed to go to the office to work. Um, they, some of them are able to work from home, but not everyone. Right. And so, yeah, a lot of people are out of a job, uh, whatever it might be. Uh, you know, it's, they don't have the type of relief that's yeah. being provided in the UK or in, or in the U.S., Oh, really? And um, there was some sort of payment um, relating to uh, government contribution from people's paychecks. Right. I don't know if it was a tax or some other type of contribution, mm -hmm. but uh, I believe that for a couple of months that has been waived. Oh, okay. But that doesn't, doesn't really, you know, when you think about long term, what does it really mean with of what's course, going yeah. on? I mean, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know when this is going to end. <laughs> no one does. Um, you know, it's, 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 yeah, it's really difficult to say every country is treating this, this, um, situation differently. And in my view, because of that, this is going to be around for some time. And I think that, uh, you know, a number of businesses are certainly taking that into account. Yeah. Um, the businesses that can survive working remotely, I think are in, better shape but the, you know there is there's like a domino effect that has uh slowly but may start to you know much more quickly fall but oh, what about your wife knows. what about her work <laughs> yes yeah, so she so yeah she um she works actually remotely she does uh, a lot of support relating to uh some of my activities okay so that involves a testing type of work as a quality assurance tester. Okay. And this is for websites. So, you know, looking at a website, understanding based on whatever the requirements for that website are, if there's some sort of issue. Yeah. And that, that's actually quite popular um, activity in Ukraine and other Eastern European countries that are involved in IT outsourcing. Yep. There's a big big population. So actually that's, that's of, I would say of interest in, in this country that there are a number of IT outsourcing professionals here and yeah, they're paying attention very closely to what's happening mm -hmm. with uh, the situation because it could affect, you know, what are businesses outside of Ukraine, especially, you know, clients of these outsourcing companies, you know, what will happen? Well, at least you can work from home with that. So, that's yeah, that's exactly. Um, yeah, you know, and I, I should just you know give the disclaimer, which maybe I should have given in the beginning. But you know, my my experience is certainly going to be very different from others in Ukraine. I'm I'm very fortunate, very fortunate that I have the job that I do, that I have the skill sets 
that I do and that I'm able to do all of them remotely. And yeah, yeah. that's, you know, it's not something that everyone can say that they're able to do. And you know, I want to, you know, just hope, you know, I want to hope that this does end as soon as, well, I already do hope that it ends as soon as possible. I just want to hope that everyone will be okay yeah. along the process to all of this ending. You know, I've been here for over four years. So when people ask me, you know, how do you like it? Are you going to come back, as they say? Come back meaning to London or to Virginia yeah. or, or whatnot. And yeah, I do consider London to be a, another home of mine. So that counts as, you know, coming back to London. But anyway, yeah, I don't know about the idea of leaving London. I, I bought an apartment here. We did a complete renovation. Like it was an empty concrete shell nice. pretty much when we bought it and did the full, full build out and it was finished mostly. Yeah. Across the period of nine, nine or something. Oh, months nice one, man. Last Beautiful. Year. And how's your Ukrainian coming that, along? <laughs> not, <laughs> not very good. Like I, I haven't been, haven't been practicing much the the two languages that are used most frequently in Ukraine are Russian and Ukrainian mm-hmm. and I've learned some some Russian some Ukrainian probably more Russian than Ukrainian my wife speaks mostly a uh, Russian day to day okay and you know I could be practicing a bit more I, I certainly know a lot of the basics quite well yeah but uh, just I mean, yeah, I'm just not using it. So I would love to go to more different cities in Ukraine. I've been to Lviv, to Kharkiv, to Odessa, some oh, nice. other cities like, um, you know, I'd like to go to Vinitsa. There's also one city where actually, I think it was where the first infection happened. I think it's uh, Chernitsky. Okay. So, yeah, I've heard about that being a pretty nice place to visit I'm, cool. I'm obviously not going to go there did you see the, the big steps in Odessa There's a, they're famous steps yes yes I did I, I even walked walked along them and yeah. I think when I walked down I did not walk back up no <laughs> so, there's an old Sergei um, an old Russian director Sergei Eisenstein um, and mm-hmm. one of his films is like a the, that step sequence where the, the baby in the pram goes down and I think it's been used in other Hollywood Hollywood films, but that's where the idea originally came from. That film. Um, oh, so I'd that's always pretty to cool. See them. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. Um, but that's the cool. thing. Uh, I'm sure Ukraine's got this, you know, a great um, cultural um, and creative. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think so too. It's just it has a really cool vibe. There are a lot of creative startups that are growing up here. Like you said, of, IT. You know, yeah. Nice entrepreneurial mindset. Yeah, a lot of IT. Just uh, people who are interested in doing something creative and learning. A lot of people take different types of master classes. At least people that I know, they're learning how to cook or to dance. And there's just, there is a lot to do here. And I still have plenty to to gain from being in this country. So I also him, want to, I want to, you know, I want to do more too. I, I love to mentor people and to train people. And I want to do a bit more of that, help people become the best uh, version of themselves through however I can contribute to that. Yeah. And that's the thing, obviously the, what we've heard on the news over the past years of from Ukraine, it's not obviously been of a most positive note. Um, that's right yeah so it's good to promote you know from your experiences of being there yeah the good good things i should actually yeah that's right there are the good things and actually when i moved here four years ago because you know for me even moving to the country was new but everyone would ask me why are you uh going to ukraine like is there something going on with uh russia and i said yeah there there is um i doesn't mean that i i can't live there no no, of course. Well, and I yeah. just, I've experienced, yeah, I've I've just experienced good things. So I'm oh. I'm very happy with my my decision to move here. And yeah. obviously, I met my wife obviously, here, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not the most. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's just been good. It's not the most liberal of countries. I'm, I'm guessing. 
Um, well, you know, it's, it's difficult to say. Like, I've found it to be quite liberal. Okay. Um, oh, good. Yeah, I mean, I personally, I found it to be liberal. Yeah, sure, it has some different conservative circles, and I think that, you know, not everyone is vocal about what they think, but I haven't experienced anything, like, too dramatic that suggests, hmm, is it liberal? No, I haven't really experienced too much of that in Ukraine. I, I consider Ukraine to be part of Europe. Okay, yeah. I think that, you know, at least with everyone that I know, they they like the idea and they support the idea of a liberal democracy. Right, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's my experience anyway. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm guessing the, yeah. the, the youth has this... Um, more um, open, open mindset, you know. And open. Absolutely, that's that's right. Actually, all the the youth that that I've been meeting, um, they're usually into IT. Okay. And they're into startups, and they are thinking about you know how can we change what's going on. So it's 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 a pretty nice energy here. Yeah, it's Good. the ex Soviet Union, and there's a lot of ex Soviet stuff going on in terms of architecture and yeah. maybe the older generation, but it's only headed in a good direction in my view. And I think that yeah, over time there will be more harmony with, with Europe. Yep. Already Ukrainian citizens are able to travel visa free to the Schengen zone. Okay. Yep. Um, well, obviously not right now, but <laughs> no, um, in general, yeah. 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 Well, it sounds like you've uh, you, you know you certainly got your life made out there at the moment. So I'm sure you'll see how it develops over the coming years. And um, absolutely. But like I said, mate, um, when you're back in London, give me a shout and we'll we'll grab a beer. And likewise, when I um, when I come to visit you as well, and you should do. Yeah, the co- I should just mention the cost of living here um, <laughs> okay. with the yeah. British with the with the British pounds is incredible so yeah i think that you would have a, a very exciting and affordable a uh, trip here no doubt i'm no sure doubt. <laughs> i'm sure it would yeah well man i was thank you for talking to me what's the time out there now it's seven fifty p.m oh, i don't know so let you get your dinner <laughs> Yeah, I'll be doing that, and who knows, I might be doing a little bit of work as well. Oh, so, break. Yeah. <laughs> you make the rest of us look bad. Uh, I'll, I'll get some rest, no worries. Good I'll sleep when I'm dead. Oh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm that you're recovering well, and um, yeah, sounds you sound good, man. Yeah, thank you. No, it was good catching up with you, and yeah, appreciate the, the conversation. Yeah, cheers, man.